Tomu. I will present a performance lecture on the Occupied Syndagma Square in Athens in 2011. The Occupied Syndagma Square is the square in front of the parliament in Greece. And you heard, I think, about the square occupation movements in 2011 that spread from Trahir Square to Puerto del Sol to Athens and then in September um, at Occupy Wall Street. And the Sinangma Square is the central Greek example of this kind of square occupation movements. So we jump a bit, I think, um, content-wise from the lecture that you heard before, but also form-wise. This is a, an approach, an artistic approach. This is an approach through means of artistic documentarism. So the questions I raise are about the nature of these kind of movements, but also about their representation. Questions on historization, questions on collective memory of the many. I show five works that work independently from each other, and um, I will now begin with the first work.
Das waren journalistische Reste oder the noise de plebea. This was journalistic leftovers or the noise of the plebs. This was slogans from the Sindagma Square. I uh, made audio recordings back then in June 2011. I was sent by German radio to do a reportage on the square. And this was um, the audio recordings that I could not use in any of my reportages in radio because I thought they are too extreme or I thought they might be misunderstood by German public. So the rest said um, journalistic leftovers or garbage of history in the darkness of my hard drives. Good. We go to the second work. The second work is a lecture lecture. That's why I have to change into a lecture situation. You have to wait a bit. The Greek occupation of the Sindaka Square was, in my eyes, a very advanced example of the spare occupation protest format. It contained a very heterogeneous crowd, representing all parts of society, not only educated students and middle-class segments, and I think this is something the square shared with the squares of the Arab Spring more than with Occupy Wall Street. It was an occupation which lasted one and a half to two months with an advanced infrastructure of everyday needs covering on the square, a big tent city with uh, approximately 100 tents, and general assemblies with thousands of participants, up to 10,000 people. They rehearsed real democracy or direct democracy on a daily basis. But there is not so much of a discourse about it anymore. It is an event which did not gain much interest by international scholars and activists in comparison with Spanish Puerta de Sol um, or Occupy Wall Street. There are many reasons for that, but one reason is for sure that the interest of the Greek scholars and activists themselves faded away quickly as well. Times experience very condensed in Greece at the moment. The crisis accelerated time in an unforeseen way. Society changes in months like it would have needed decades to change in other periods. And the problems of the activists or the concerns of the movements change very quickly as well. There is no time for looking back at an event which was also not experienced as a victory. Many conceive it as a defeat. It has no legacy of a successful heritage since the prospect of it was not only to express some general political dissatisfaction, but more comparable with the Arab Spring, its aim was to shift hegemonic power in very concrete terms, meaning to stop the austerity programs, something it did not achieve. In this sense, Sindagma stayed an incomplete project. So being someone who is researching on the issue, I find Sindagma Square's remainings today in some personal testimonies, few publications, and finally, in web videos from that time that are still online. Those that you saw before, for example. Web videos, images recorded with mobile phones or small cameras, pixeled, shaky, expressing excitement in the handheld mode. Document rags, document fetzen, that rest in the apparently non-sorted, in the arbitrary non-archived database of YouTube. And it is these leftovers, these visual wrecks that fascinated me, that I started to call visual historic garbage, according to Walter Benjamin's love for the garbage of history. The garbage of history meant for Benjamin those images and moments that did not get too much of attention by hegemonic historians, 
that society suppressed in its collective unconscious for some reason. The garbage of history, meaning also the incomplete moment of history, those which did not accomplish their goals, those that might be considered failed, or, the way I read it, those that wait for their fulfillment in the future, that will, those that will become complete at a later time. So I started to collect mobile font videos that capture the square occupation, and they interested me in particular because filming was officially prohibited on the square. A prohibition of images, a builder for both, was established for hegemonic cameras and journalists. The media teams were pushed out of the square. And the result is what you see here, that international and Greek TV channels were obliged to film not from within the protest, but from the luxury balconies of the hotels around the Parliament Square. This is an image of that. Here you see the different um, media teams, CNN, um, BBC, etc., were forced out of the square. This is a video I did later on in a demonstration in 2012 when Merkel was there. And it is custom, meanwhile, for television to film from above the protest, not from within the protest. Additionally, the Intignados hated the journalists so much that they also tried to blind them with green laser pointers so that they cannot film at all. The forest reporters of German state TV RD was describing this in the following reportage. And I want to show you one small piece of uh, the first reporting of IRD, um, of the Sinagma Square occupation, where they are complaining that they can't film. And I will uh, translate for the English speakers um, live. Can I have the sound, please? Scheinwerfern zielen Demonstranten direkt in die Fernsehkameras, die okay, nur noch aus Sicherheitsentfernung vom Balkon ausführen. The demonstrators aim directly into the cameras. Wir wollen euch hier nicht mehr sehen. They can only film in a security distance from the balconies. Their gestures are clear. We don't want you here. No cameras. So also our camera team was forced to stop filming on the square. gerade hinter einer Kamera steht. Am frühen Abend sah sich auch unser Kamerateam auf dem Platz gezwungen, die Dreharbeiten abzubrechen. Mit der unauffälligen Camera später later. Auch in dieser Nacht. Okay, so the only pictures the state TV could get from within the protest were once captured with a mobile phone. The IRD had to steal its pictures. Thus, the result of the image prohibition was that the predominant source of images we have from within the square are from mobile phones, from the self-mass capturing practices of the multitude and the squares, this heterogeneous and apparently formless crowd of real democracy. The nature of this multitude is still difficult to grasp with the given categories of the usual political subjects or theories of social movements as we know them. We are the nobodies, Ateya, who was very active in Sindagma Square's kitchen, told me last summer in an interview. And the nobodies don't give their images out. They blind those who want to capture them, thus identify, name, misunderstand them, or also understand them. In short, the nobodies blind those who want to represent them. And one could argue that the gesture of image prohibition the nature of the mobile phones and their preservation on YouTube reflect this strategy of the nobodies of neglecting representation, both in media and political terms. So, we go back to the documentary leftovers you saw before, and we look at this again. But this is an experiment I did. I thought, okay, if we don't have other pictures from within the square, then the mobile phone videos. I want to collect them and see what kind of pictures are they. Um, 
This is something I want to put online, or maybe also it's in an interactive um, exhibition. You can also go inside here and look at one scene at a time. The context, the context, uh, shortly for about the context, um, I collected um, uh, certain pictures. These days were the days of the fight on the square. Um, as I mentioned before, the square in Greece had the goal to stop the austerity programs of the Troika. And during the one and a half months of the occupation, there were two parliamentary votes for the next austerity program, which the Indignados tried to prevent by blocking the parliament building. So it was uh, on the 15th of June and on the 29th of June. Um, and these days of blocking were very hard fights, culminating in a 48-hour, two days protest on the streets. Um, there was the biggest amount of tear gas uh, in Greek history since the dictatorship. And finally, on the second day, they had cleared the square. Um, and what I collected was these images from the days of the fights. The starting point of this video wall was to show the perspective from inside, to show that it is not a solely singular one, but a multitude of perspectives. The same scenes, the same space, is captured from different sources, can be watched at from different angles at a time. I, I simply put some of them together to see and test what happens when we create one image out of this simultaneous capturing and try to watch the multi-perspectivity all at once. So it's a multi-perspective, maybe, picture. I also saw here, somehow, after I did it, the symmetrical counter-image of that that I showed before with the TV cameras on the balconies. The TV cameras on the balconies were limited to their view from above, which marks the view of the omniscient narrator, the overseer from the, a distance. Here we see the opposite, nearness instead of distance. But through this nearness, this intimacy, I cannot see whole images. I tend to lose the overview and end up not to be able to recognize much between the crowd of these close-ups. What is also exactly um, uh, characteristic is that you don't so sh uh, see the classical uh, riot killing <laughs> hero, rioter, who is throwing the Molotov cocktail. This visual event might be lost in this self-capturing um, strategies. Additionally, I would say that these singular clips don't really narrate a story. They have no beginnings and no endings. They are also not edited, and thus, they don't have a strategy of planned visual narration. They are incomplete pictures, meaning pictures without a complete narrative structure. To understand what I mean with incomplete pictures, we can think of what, of what um, Krakow was saying about historical photography. It is the opposite. Historical photography claims that the world is a whole and that the photography can capture this historical totality, the totality zusammen, in its frame so that it can represent a historical event. Here we see incomplete, unfinished sequences of images without a coherent meaning. We don't see a narrative montage that chooses images like choosing historical moments that are edited in a continuous timeline one after the other and could thus narrate the story of what happened. So I read this also afterwards like a non-linear montage, a multi-montage that goes in many directions at the same time. So this is a film that can be edited like this, like this or like this. And finally, after doing the experiment, I could also see a web interface in which those images are usually watched, something like YouTube, 
the loose, non-coherent commercial web platform. Because we never watch one single of these images alone, we always click on the next and next one suggested by YouTube. They never come alone, you always watch the kaleidoscope of the multi-simultaneous montage. Not only a single one, but aggregated pictures and databases. So I don't say that there, are, that there were no other pictures on the square, but what I say is that actually with the prohibition of images, this incomplete kaleidoscope became the predominant way the Intignados represented themselves, showed themselves. Yes, this composition of documents might make the argument that this video garbage and its web platforms started to become the prevailing way the Intignados captured and watched and represent themselves. The Intignados aggregate a multitude of pictures without an order, without a certain narrative, without a structuring center, many short moments instead of a, instead of a continuity of a story, so many that all and none of them could represent what happened. So, the predominant historical archive is the commercial online data bank YouTube. One could say that this kaleidoscopical archive of YouTube is the adequate historical database for this kind of non-representational movements. Without an authority that groups and categorizes the material, the crowd-generated historical kaleidoscope fits with the form of juptification and postfordism, this fragmented and singular intignado that neglects historical representation. So my video wall experiment could raise the question on the consequences of the attitude of negation of representation of the intignados concerning the problems of self-representation, archivation, collective memory and historization. But in my perception today, these scenes from Syntagma Square on YouTube seem like forgotten testimonies that are left there until the politics of YouTube decide to put them offline without being used as a source of collective memory. They became garbage of history, forgotten on the sidewalks of historical narration. But Benjamin would argue that we should collect the garbage, not in order to group them, like in a classical archive, and to categorize them, but in order to use them. This video wall could be an effort to use the garbage of history in order to produce adequate historical machines of collective memory of the many. And the works you will see also in this performance lecture are all pieces of efforts to use the forgotten testimonies in a non-linear performative montage. Okay, this was, if you want, the, um, maybe we can put it off. Yes, this was the, the starting piece with which I started to talk about um, visual garbage. Um, and I would go over we, we, saw, we heard sound, we saw the YouTube incomplete pictures, and I wanted to go to another moment of Sintagma Square, the General Assembly. The General Assembly, you might have heard that on the square occupations, at least in Athens, um, every day there was a General Assembly held from 9 to 12. There was up to 10,000 participants in it. Um, the, the right to talk was drawn by lots, um, like in the old, in the first assembly of uh, history, in de of democracy in history, the Agora. And I thought instead of talking about this, we could also go in there and make a collective experiment with uh, the General Assembly and reenact one part of the General Assembly. And for that I will go come down with you. So we change the perspective and we circle around this, ci this mic, this civil mic. Um, yes, here you can see all the time a video from the General Assembly on the Sidama Square. 
Um, it was also prohibited to film the General Assembly, but there was always a live stream on the square. Here, by chance, I found a recorded live stream. Maybe we can watch and uh, we can also hear the sound. I hope that this is what we can see here and we can see what we can see here. We can see the real democracy. Και όλοι γνωρίζουμε ότι αυτό δεν έχει καμία σχέση okay. με την αληθινή δημοκρατία. Πρέπει λοιπόν να ξεκαθαρίσουμε. You can see here the assembly, you can see the one who is talking from the back. This was always the perspective the general assembly was filmed. You can see the bad quality of this uh, video garbage. I love this quality because this is from a live stream, so this is the way live streams are recorded. And what I did, what I thought we could do together, is to uh, read together collectively what exactly was said on the square. Uh, so I transcribed the exact uh, contributions and uh, I would, uh, we can have a bit of uh, background noise, thank you. Um, uh, and I thought we could do the same, we could do a game and read to each other what exactly was said, like a discourse researcher, but not only to see what was said, also to see how it was said, like the rhetorics, the speech acts of one thing like that, that is organized by drawing lots. So this is a game, uh, and I thought we could also draw lots here, and read out what was actually said there. Uh, the game is the following, Annette, We'll go round with the lots. I need ten people who will draw a lot and who would like to read out some of the things that were said on the square. <laughs> Okay, and, the, and the, the point is the following, that uh, I will be the moderator. You can see there, there is a moderator. He announces things all the time. He announces also the numbers that will talk. And uh, the moment you hear your number, if I say that as a moderator, you have to go to Annette and she will give you the contribution you should read out. You don't have to be theatrical. It's not about theater. It's about really seeing what kind of discourses were said. I didn't manipulate at all the documents. It's exactly, it can be also boring. It's a research situation. Okay, so I will start being the moderator and if you hear the number, you have to go to Annette and she will give you the contribution and you can read out. Okay. Uh, I want to remind you of something we said before because uh, we have still this problem. Earlier, someone lost a black bag. It had a laptop inside. Uh, we understand that the friend or the passerby or whoever lost it, I don't know, he will have a problem now. He might be a worker, he might have his things inside. Uh, yes, okay, 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 he could be also a banker, yes. Yeah, haha, ha. maybe he has uh, in this bag the secrets of the bookkeeping of the debt. Ha, ha, ha. Anyway. If you find the bag, please look out for it. Uh, we continue. The next number is the 106. Uh, and then the numbers 304, 6 and 75. They should prepare themselves. Yeah. Hello to everyone. I'm the youngest speaker today. Here's all the and I want to become a doctor. Why should I fear about my salary? Why should I have fear because of them? In my life, I learned to fight, and I propose that we all unite into a fist, in a way that the rule of Greece will hear us, or what is left of Greece, because we are left and still here. So I invite the people to save themselves, and my generation as well. I present the children, because we are dissatisfied as well. We are all equal. 
Let's give the politicians a taste of our lives. They should live like us, and we will see if they can be it. The aim is that we all contribute with a small stone and that we build a huge brick out of them and that we throw the brick on them. I mean it metaphorically, of course. But even if it seems small, the stone from every one of us, is, it is everything we have. We should say, no people, no. We are governing, not you. Life is not there in order to drink coffee, as if nothing is happening, but in order to fight. I am Angelos, even if, yes, after this contribution, it is a very but difficult to get back to the agenda. It's logical. After such a young person, yes, who might speak for the first time in front of so many people, yes, mm, but okay, I want to say two single things. First of all, yes, it's very important that the whole Sindagma Square cries out tomorrow, and along with us, the whole of Greece, so that they can hear us everywhere. Secondly, very important, in order to achieve what we want is the 15th of June. On this day, we want to overthrow them. The point is, all plan actions, they have to be much more concrete, okay? The information has to be spread. They have to be spread to everyone, yes? But this does not function like, the, like we knew it until today. So this will not happen by pushing the bureaucracy of the Union in order to call for strikes. No, instead, every colleague has to do this thing in his working place himself. He must, he must go to every colleague personally and tell him, come down to the Sindagma Square, come to stand together with us here. Thus, it is very important the working group of interventions into the city gets more support so that we can confront our problems all together. Hi, it is not easy to speak in front of the public. I think most people that have done it before are mostly important journalists, politicians, unionists. Uh, I'm none of them, and it can also happen that I all say also nonsense into the mic, okay? Uh, what, I <laughs> what I think is. Already this process here has a political character and this point and on we will go step by step. At least this is what I think. And then we should go uh, and do a plan. Uh, what, what will be the plan? From 9 to 10, uh, 9 to 12, the time when the General Assembly is to take decisions, we should not discuss about casual issues. These issues we can talk about afterwards in small groups or wherever. Uh, uh, the, 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 the thematic agenda is the most important thing. Here, for example, is an important point on the agenda on which no one has said anything yet. So I want to speak spe specifically on this point. This 15th of June, this day, this is the central day. It is about the blocking of the parliament with one, win, one million people, they said. I could say 10 million people. The number is not important. This might be nonsense now, but as many as possible should come down to the square to block the parliament. We will participate with the neighborhood assembly of the district so Sografu. We will match from Sografu together to Sintagma and block the side of the flo flower shops. The other side of the flower shop is already blocked, it seems. So we will get together with other neighborhood assemblies. For example, those of the district Mirona and Kes Kesariani. Coordinate among each other and move our district assemblies to Syntagma Square until, until, until the 15th. The aim is the, is the Syntagma Square, but not only the square, but also the other side, the side of the flower shops. This all has to be blocked so that we prevent the politicians to go in and vote. <laughs> uh, sorry, can I tell you something? 
Could you please draw another four lots so that we have some? Okay, we continue. More numbers. We draw the numbers 33, 175, 46, and 2010. Remind everyone of the black bag of the high IMF businessman with a laptop. Yes, yes, ha ha. So when you find the bag, okay, the next number which speaks is the 75, then come the 33, 175, 46, and 210. Elispera, Azul from my side. I want to make four suggestions and pose two questions that can be answered by every one of us personally, but maybe also by the assembly. First of all, we say all the time no violence and I don't know what. So, people, on the 15th of June, the blockade of the parliament. The blockade itself, people, is a practice of violence. Yes. What sh shall we do? If you go and block the parliament, yes, unfortunately, yes, people, yes. But since we all still want to block the parliament, I suggest that we prepare accordingly, inform the people, and build working groups, groups that build chains, that distribute gas masks, and distribute malox liquid against the tear gas. Because the moment the tear gas starts falling, people, we will all go to our homes. Sorry, man. Then, secondly, I agree that we need to coordinate among the neighborhood assemblies. And the two questions, what do we want? We want to improve today's situation and make everything a bit better, as it was before the crisis on the IMF? Or do we want a deep change that starts all from the beginning? We should think about it. And secondly, we speak about strike and strike. What are we going to do on this day? Do we join the march of the unions, the pain, the general union, the union of the public servants? Do we march alone? Maybe someone could answer this question as well. Thank you. The movement of Sintagma Square, because this is how I would characterize this, is and I can say this from the bottom of my heart, a pure and innocent movement. But have you ever thought about this, and that there are people and that want to use this pureness of them for themselves? In order to do opposition in politics, the slogan, let's overthrow the government, could also be cried out by the Conservative Party or the Communist Party or other groups, and us, the stupid, we say, yes. But I have always sabotaged these games. I don't sacrifice myself for no one of you guys, even if you are the opposition, because we, we are a social movement. I suggest, like they cried out uh, back then, overthrow the junta, we should also say today, yes, overthrow the debt regime, and each government that obeys the foreign forces. But the question is, what do we fight for? What do we favor? For a structural political transformation, for a selection of representatives directly by the people, without fractions and lists of parties. For a system with referenda that can, put, uh, that can be put into practice with 50,000 or 100,000 signatures like they do in Switzerland. The whole political system has to be changed. We have to give a political meaning to all of us here. We should not be only a reaction or, or a protest because we don't want to play the games of the opposition. Okay. Do we have enough? We could go for hours like this, uh, because it was also done for hours every day. They will go on for hours, but maybe we, we were in the position a bit to see how it was spoken, how the speech was on the square. So I leave you now with a small postscriptum, a sound. Um, I will uh, make a sound collage and uh, mix it live. Um, I thought I wanted at the end to manipulate all the material. Um, also with a desire that through manipulation I could complete, complete 
these unfulfilled pictures. Um, also with a desire that big documentaries used to have that didn't want to say something about the past, but they transformed the material, not to show how the conditions were or are, but to show how the conditions can become. So I also wanted to manipulate my material and to use this garbage of history to say not something about the past of Sindama Square, but to say something about the future. And since they were incomplete, I thought that they actually hint to a future that is yet, yet, that is yet to come. Mm. So for this last part, I wanted to break down the illusion of a real representation and um, open up the space for many endings, the space open for our imagination and do documentarism to evoke imagination. So this garbage of history could be... Um, yeah, it could be used to approach the texture of reality um, through imagination. And this could go, for example, like this. Το βασικό σύστημα εδώ είναι η παρουσία σας, είναι η γονός. 
like those who want to represent them. And I want to argue that the gesture of human